All right, I've got my Alaska hat on. You know what that means. It's time for some action. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I mean. You guys threw me off there for a minute. <laughs> you smell that in the air? What is it? Fish, trout? Dinner. Dinner? <laughs> Okay, mm. all they can go through my mind. Do we want to do a breaded, pan seared, <laughs> oven grilled <laughs> recipes? Ding, 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 oh, ding, 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 ding. So well, these boys need good. to catch me a fish. Yeah, these boys. Welcome back to KYD. We are 13 miles up the Colorado River. Yes. In Lee's Ferry. Absolutely breathtaking. And there was a bit of a nostalgic moment when Jimmy, our guide, said right now we are in the bend of Horseshoe Bend. And you could see little people's heads over the mm -hmm. edge of the yeah. canyon and they're all looking down at the beautiful bend. That's and right. we're actually in a boat going yes. around that bend, which we saw on our very first day. Day one, episode one of KYD, our destination was Lake Powell. And we got a picture of all five of us at Horseshoe Bend. Yes. And here we are almost two years later to the month, and now we're on a guide, guided fishing trip in that bend. So it was a little bit nostalgic. And Jimmy, our fishing guide with Lee's Ferry Angler, shared some interesting information about the fish in this river. So it stays the same temperature. It doesn't matter how hot it gets. It gets up to 120 degrees here during the summer in July and August. I say the water's still 48, 49 degrees all the time. It's a good environment for rainbow trout and brown trout. We're starting to see some more brown trout here. Keep sliding, keep sliding. Keep sliding, keep sliding, keep sliding. Not dropping. Good job. Yeah, baby. Fine. Da -da -dum. She's a fat 16 inch fish. Oh, ah, twice we missed him. Too busy talking, not fishing, huh? a six inch little strip and we're using a sink tip line so just the last 30 feet of the line sinking it as opposed to a full sink the whole line goes down but here with the sink tip we can get right into the water column that we want to get into which is about three to four feet above the bottom it's good oh yeah it's a little freshwater shrimp looking guy yeah so that's what the fish eat there all right so there's a midge larvae this guy here yeah and you can see all the scuds just going bonkers and that stuff there. Look at them all, see them? Oh, yeah. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, yeah. it's just full of them, isn't it's it? It's full of them. Fly fishermen inherently look for riffles because, like I said, that's what tumbles the food source. And once those little midges, scuds, San Juan worms get in that cladophora and they come over the top of that riffle and they roll out, the fish can make an easy meal. So they stack up especially trout, they're a schooling fish. They'll stack up in a school and you'll see them come up and grab and grab and grab all day till they get full, which I guess they don't ever because they usually seem to eat almost all day long. You don't see that hole, do you see it there, Trish? The hole that's just in the mountain there, you gotta really see it. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So that tunnel is one of about 10 tunnels that are side tunnels that go to the tunnel that helped them create the dam. So when they built the dam in 1958, they started and they go, well, geez, how are we gonna get all this equipment up? The barges can't get up, it's too shallow. The helicopters at the time were too weak to get the heavy equipment up and over and into the canyon without crashing. So one of the engineers that uh, worked on the Hoover Dam project said, well, look, let's just tunnel down, go there and build the dam. So they did, they started here, which is at 13 miles. The dam's at 16 miles. So that means they got a three mile long tunnel. They said it took them six months to build it. Well, in their, their wisdom, they said, instead of dragging all that dirt back out, you know, they just come out the side. So you see one there and one over there. And of course, like I said, they go all the way down. Oh, that's what they did in Zion. Absolutely. Yeah, so you have those gorgeous views too right, right. now for us, but for them it was to get rid of all the excess material.
Okay, so sometimes I think to myself, what can I accomplish in two years? Mm -hmm. But if I was an engineer in 1958, I would have accomplished this in two years. From 58 to 60, they built this Glen Canyon Dam Amazing. with a whole system of tunnels to bring their equipment down. I mean, it's completely fascinating. It's mind blowing. I mean, not only do you have the beauty of just being here. Yes. And then you look at like, modern marvels like yes. this, and it's amazing. All right, Jimmy shared with us some interesting information. In 1984, there was so much runoff out of the snow melt in Utah that water came over the top of the dam. Rushing over the top. Typically, it would take about 21 days to raft from here to Lake Mead, and there was a group that did it in 36 hours. <laughs> Can you imagine that? I mean, just like hold on for your dear it's life. It's probably already pretty scary. Yes. <laughs> Anyhow. All right, so now we're going to go find a spot where we can get into this water, which I think would be pretty interesting. Yes. And go catch some more fish and get these boys. Let's do it. I think what? there's a school trip over there. Oh, yeah. The bus sure just let out, and uh, yeah. they're probably going to take a boat up the river. there I've got about a rod length of line I want you to go straight up there behind you and then back down and then make your mend and just send it out there make slack yep see how I'm going side to side right mm -hmm. slack in the line is because that's gonna let that bug go all the way down to the water in the in the bottom of the water column and look natural if it doesn't have slack on the fly line then it's going to be pulling and it's gonna look like that bug's not floating naturally like you would. Got it. Ooh, yes. Oh, nice. All right. Wow. That's a really pretty fish, man. How do I do the Look water? at that. Really oh, pretty man, male. Yeah. Wow. Those colors. So how are you telling that it's male or female? See his lips? See the little knob on the front of his lip? Nice yeah. kipe jaw, that's called a kipe jaw, and that's a male fish. You know, a lot of times when you're in front of stuff like this, and first of all, you know, if this said, if this said 1992, it'd be a pretty oh, jerk move. But when you know it's part of an expedition from 1892, it's pretty cool. And I will say when you're in front of petroglyphs, sometimes it's hard to relate to the time frame. You don't really know when it was written and what the situation was. But in this case, you know that somebody was sitting here with a rock carving this in on November 16th, 1892. It's pretty cool. This one's 17. What? And it's yes. beautiful fish. Wait, 16 wow. Hi. Hi. <laughs> Look at him. Boy, oh. right? It's a girl. It's a girl? Yep, that's a hen. Come kiss her. Mwah. All right. See you later. Ooh, she's slimy. Yeah. She's she slimy so kiss her. Woo! Oh, 
This rock here had fallen off of a cliff of thousands of years ago, and then it rolled down and ended up here. Like most of these rocks have rolled down and ended up here. And then what happens is through thousands of years of erosion, they kind of erode around creating these balanced rocks. But we have the Native Americans who have built little homes around the base of the rocks, mm, yes. which is really cool. We'll show you that right down the street. Oh my gosh. This is pretty cool. It's like a sauna at a health spa. Wow. There's a pretty darn good view right there. There sure is. So look at this, so they built around this boulder. Yeah. Hey, they had a fireplace. Yes. This, there's some pretty good stuff. All I this agree. is added later. Yes. Because there's nails and things. So Lee's Ferry was a ferry that crossed the Colorado and separated were... Utah from Arizona. Yes. And so historically people would come there and they would cross over into Arizona and they would get on Lee's Ferry and they would take them down into Vegas. Yes? Well, the only other pl place to cross was down in Vegas. Oh, okay. So people wanted to cross here and there were three points to cross. Mm. And so one of them was um, where people would go get married up in Utah. Okay. And then they would bring their horse and carriage and then go travel across to Arizona to go like do homesteading. Gotcha. And so what would happen is they'd go get married, they'd go over Lee's Ferry, and then in their wagon there was this little trail and they call it the Honeymoon Trail. That all came to an end when this bridge was created in 1929, then they started to use it. And I think we've just come here for the perfect hour. The sun has peaked out around the clouds and look at what it's doing behind us. And below us is the Colorado River. This is stunning landscape. Mm -hmm. Stunning landscape. And if you ever have an opportunity to come out here and fish with Lee's Ferry Anglers, link down below. These guys are first class all the you way. You will not be disappointed. You could rent your own boat mm -hmm. or you could go with a guide. guide. You go with a guide, awesome. you're going to know exactly what to bring. You're going to know exactly what the fish are eating. They're going to have all their own gear. And if you're an RVer, you can stay at the campground and not have to worry about all that equipment. And pretty much be guaranteed a good time. Right, exactly. <laughs> and so I'd say that uh, today's coming to an end. It's been a long day. It has been a long day. I wish we had more air conditioned days here. <laughs> um, boondocking take two. <laughs> it's going awesome. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Anyway, okay. anyhow, solar solar upgrade is happening any any minute, <laughs> any minute, any, any minute. minute. But now we're just kind of waiting for the temperature to drop, and it will drop. It's hot. Arizona's hot in the afternoon, but it gets chilly at night. So, okay, maybe not chilly. You throw the word chilly around. <laughs> yeah, eight to ten degrees. It's, it's chilly. <laughs> It's chilly. It's like 24 degrees. It's chilly. <laughs> it's still like 94. This is, don't be deceived. This is a swim shirt so that I don't get burned <laughs> standing here, okay? All right, well, it'll be, it'll be in the, it'll be in the mid 60s tonight. Is there a bet on that? Oh, you're still here? Oh, I'm glad you didn't leave because there was still some more things we wanted to share with you. Like, how about this campground? We get asked all the time to share more information about the campgrounds in which we stay. And this is an exceptional one. This is $20 a night. It is the Lee's Ferry Campground. Actually, I think it's the Glen Canyon Recreational Area. And you can see the Colorado River right there. And right over there is the boat ramp, which is where Western River Expedition kicks off their Colorado rafting trips. It's where uh, Lee's Ferry Anglers kick off the trip that we went on yesterday. Uh, this is dry camping only. And 
I will say we had a bit of a problem. I can't, for some reason, the water heater is not lighting. And so I've come over here to figure out what's going on and I don't know what the deal is. So I couldn't get it to work. So we've had just lukewarm water. I watched some videos to make sure that like these valves weren't on because I was using these a few days ago. I've checked the propane. I've cycled through, I've bled out all the propane in the lines and it, it won't work. I went onto the Grand Design owner's form and found out that it might be a circuit board, but not sure. So not something we can deal with now and a lukewarm shower is fine because it's so warm. But anyway, so that's something we're gonna have to get taken care of. But anyhow, this is an exceptional park. It's first come, first serve and you fill out a little yellow tag. And if you don't get in here for some reason because it's peak season, there's plenty of BLM in the area. So you can always be sure to get some stuff like that. Well, can't get the third slide in. And I don't know if when I was operating it on a low battery, if it popped a fuse. We looked at the fuses, they seem fine. We had to move sights, which I don't like ever driving with the slides out. This one will go in. We just need the room to get in and out. But this one's stuck open. So, look at this. You see that right there? I'll show you how I accomplished that. I hooked up the solar panel. And within, it's getting about 12, well let's look. Uh, six amps right there, charging the batteries. It didn't take very long to get enough power there. So now I need to figure out how to get that relay in my fuse box on the truck. As I said, it's putting, it's charging the batteries, but it's just not, it's just not relaying the power. So I need to get that relay in there. So that is it for Lee's Ferry, and that is it for season four. We have, we've got to start moving into maintenance mode, getting maintenance ready, mode. getting prepared. We're gonna do a season four recap, talk our, about our favorite locations. Oh yes. Okay, yes. so we're gonna talk about our favorite locations, stuff like that, stuff that we wish we would have done a little better and all that. Mm -hmm. And then improve, improve the rig, improve the trailer, get all ready for season five, which will be kicked off soon. Yeah. All right, so that is it for now. If you're new here, click that subscribe button, and we'll catch you next weekend. Next weekend. Bye-bye. All right, I've got my Alaska hat on. You know what that means. It's time for some action. Oh, <laughs> I mean, you guys threw me off there for a minute. <laughs> <laughs> I meant like you know, adventuring. Hey, hey, whatever you meant, I'm Do fine with that. So I've got my Alaska hat on. You know what that means, right? <laughs> I don't know if I should touch that. <laughs> but I got my Alaska hat on. You know what that means? <laughs> it means we're tight. It means it's fishing time. Oh, okay, sure, I can say that. <laughs> All right. Well, I've got my Alaska hat on. You know what that means, right? It's fishing time. <laughs>